Erev Tov, Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And tonight we'll be looking at some disturbing news that fits Jesus' own prophetic words of what would happen in the end of days. Not only are we seeing ISIS fulfill these words, but even across the world, his words are definitely haunting, to say the least there. President Zaman with the Czech Republic is telling it like it is and pulling no punches as usual. And also uh, some other breaking news we'll be going to in just a moment here about Israel and something that has happened by Doctors Without Borders in France just recently. But first we will take you to a disturbing trend in Turkey's government cover-ups in the U.S. afraid of the truth being exposed. Um, something that's very alarming to us as well. But actually, I tell you what, instead of going to that news first there, I do want to take you about the particular news uh, cast that is going on right now uh, that we just got. Brother Conrad shared this here with me. Uh, I just caught this before coming on air, so I want to bring you to this first here. French Jews are outraged over exhibit glorifying Arab terror. I apologize. Actually, Brother Conrad shared a different article with me there. Um, this one here was something we caught after looking at the article he brought out. Uh, anyway, the, um, this uh, uh, French Jewish groups are in arms over a new photo exhibition in Paris, which they argue glorifies Palestinian terrorism. Uh, the controversial exhibition put up uh, by Doctors Without Borders features pictures and accompanying te text about the Israel-Palestinian conflict, which it claims began with Zionism, goal of creating a Jewish state in Palestine. So Doctors Without Borders flat out accuses the Jewish people of creating the state to begin with and causing all the problems that are going on in the Middle East. I guess the Doctors Without Borders must not have a very good historical education knowing that the British mandate is actually what first established the Jewish state. Uh, as well, the British mandate was the one that determined that the, the Jewish state would actually be headed by two rabbis, uh, one from the Ashkenazi uh, side and the other by the Sephardic side. Many other things about this mandate. In fact, there was no country, if I recall right, there was no country of Jordan at that time. Uh, so the land, the, the British mandate actually gave far more land than what Israel has today. And this was a place for the Jewish homeland. It was very much a deserted area back in those days. Uh, but that's something they've kind of ignored to say the least. Another part of the exposition centers on a 26-year-old from Shechem who has been imprisoned multiple times in Israeli jails without expounding on the terrorist crimes that likely put him in jail. That's what the uh, Israel National News is saying there. They're not even looking at why the man ended up in jail so many different times. Uh, but the exhibit, exhibit simply describes Israeli prisons of having degrading, humiliating conditions. I think pretty much all prisons are like that. Another photo displays an Arabic language poster describing a Palestinian terrorist eliminate, eliminated while attacking Israelis as a martyr. Of course, the article goes on more and more. You can catch us on our Facebook page, Israeli News Live, if you'd like to see more of this. Uh, the article, though, that Brother um, Conrad shared with me is this one right here, though, and I'll bring this out real quick, too. This is something I'd actually seen another post myself regarding this here. This is uh, a report. Uh, this is done by Reuters here, USC's bearable costs, key goals met for Russia in, in, uh, uh, in Syria so far. Analysts of the, of the U.S. military is actually praising Russia for its, uh, of course, these are analysts that do not want to be, uh, don't want anybody to know who they are. But anyway, three months uh, into the, his military intervention in Syria, Russian President Vladimir Putin has achieved his central goal of stabilizing the Assad government, government and with the cost relatively low. Could sustain military operations at this level for years, U.S. officials and military analysts say. That assessment comes despite public assertions by President Barack Obama, top aides that Putin has embarked on an ill-conceived mission in support of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad that it will struggle to afford and that will likely fail. I think it is indisputable that Assad regime with Russian military support is probably in a safer position than it was at a senior administration official who requested anonymity. 
Five other U.S. officials interviewed by Reuters concurred with the view that the Russian mission has been mostly successful so far and is facing relatively low, uh, a low cost in doing so. I thought those were kind of very interesting to say the least there. And, um, but anyway, there. Let's, let's move on, though, to the article that I wanted to bring to your attention here that I spoke about earlier. Uh, this is in regards to the Syrian journalist... Uh, the, the filmmaker, and let me just back up right here. This is where we actually want to go here. Um, we are actually looking here. This is, this is a uh, Syrian journalist who was murdered. Uh, his name is Najid uh, uh, Jerf, and uh, he was actually murdered in Turkey today. Now, it was a drive-by shooting, but apparently whoever was doing the assassination the car was moving, it was a pistol used with a silencer, and the man was shot in the head. And this is something that's really kind of caught my attention here. Now, there's many that are saying that ISIS is behind this, but even as it's mentioned in the report here, uh, the, the, according to uh, RT, some of the, uh, they were interviewing a Syrian journalist, from Damascus that stated, that works for RT there, that stated that it is relatively, it is nearly impossible to come up with a silencer even during a wartime period. Now I have found articles that does show that uh, silencers were uh, given to Iraqi forces by U.S. officials during the, the war there. Uh, so there are certainly silencers that are floating around. There's been different types for rifles, for pistols, etc. But there again, they do claim that they're very rare to come by. Now, another thing, though, that is very interesting in this, when we begin to look at this story here, is that um, um, when I actually begin to dive deeper into this, uh, I wanted to see what is it that would cause this man that they would want him dead. And of course, uh, uh, one, they also interviewed a, a journalist from... Uh, uh, Turkey from Ankara, and he says it's ISIS because of exposing what the atrocities that ISIS has done, especially in Aleppo. But that's a big concern of mine because you have to understand ISIS seems to pride itself in glorifying the horrific things that they do to their, uh, to their opponents. So is there something deeper behind this? And that's where my concern comes up in this. This is a journalist who is a uh, film producer, a documentary uh, specialist there. Uh, he, I have seen the 30-minute uh, segment that he did on the documentary that documented the atrocities that were done by ISIS in Aleppo. Uh, it's not, to me, super revealing when it comes to the atrocities that they did, but it's clearly documenting what goes on. Now, my question is then, is there something else or maybe perhaps something in his documentary films which you're seeing footage of now on your screen there, is there some, some, something in the footage there that might uh, cause problems for other countries that are involved? I mean, Russia already is accusing Syria of very much deep involvement, not Syria, but Turkey of deep involvement with ISIS, backing them, supplying them, training them. Uh, and allowing training to be done on their side. Even RT News has come out with another report uh, just today that uh, a, a, another man that had been captured uh, by the Kurds that says that, yes, the training bases are inside of the Turkey. Inside of Turkey, he was trained there himself, uh, and he's also worked with many others that have been trained uh, inside Turkey before going on to the fronts there. So my question is, 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 uh, is this particular man right here, did he know something uh, that would implicate Turkey's involvement in ISIS or possibly even the United States uh, way in the background? Now, one thing, though, that I would like to share with you that I think is interesting, to say the very least in this, and this was from an article that I picked up um, that was on the New York Times, and it's something, it's just a, a little inside note here because the Navy SEALs, especially Team 6, is very, uh, very known for using, uh, uh, using silencers uh, as part of their armament that they use. They, of course, they are trained unbelievably well. And, uh, and, and yet there's all kinds of things that go on in, in, uh, with the Navy SEALs around the world that the world never even knows. Many politicians will never know about it. 
Uh, it's very much a very secret organization of things that happen. But this was uh, in the article on the New York Times here that was uh, produced here back in June, uh, or excuse me, July, uh, was it June 7th or July 7th of 2015, where it came out, uh, The Secret History of the SEAL Team 6. And this was the part that I wanted to share with you. The unit's advocates express no doubts about the value of such invisible warriors. If you want these forces to do things that occasionally bend the rules of international law, said James G. St uh, uh, Stav Stav Stavridis, a retired admiral and former Supreme Allied Commander at NATO, referring to going into undeclared war zones, you certainly don't want that out in public. Team 6, he added, should continue to operate in the shadows. But others warn of the seduction of an endless campaign of secret missions far from public view. If you're unacknowledgeable on the battlefield, said William C. Banks, an expert on national security law at Syracuse University, you're not accountable. Now, I can't say the U.S. was involved in this assassination at all. It could have easily been ISIS, as many have suggested. But I do question who had the ability to assassinate using a moving vehicle with a pistol. Silencer wouldn't be the big issue here, but a headshot with a moving vehicle, no less. One thing's for sure, using a silencer, they did not want to attract attention to who was actually doing the shooting. And it was in broad daylight. It wasn't something that was done at night. It's a very gutsy move, to say the very least there. I'm sure in the days ahead, we'll find out more about what actually happened here. But let's go ahead and go with our main top story that I wanted to bring to you. The very, the very thing that brings the title of this particular broadcast here, a prophecy that Jesus himself made that we are seeing, not just ISIS fulfilling, but Something that is very concerning to me, it's a prophecy that Jesus made that's being fulfilled globally. But ISIS's own account in an article that we pulled up here and we saved for you, and I believe that was RT News that did it there, uh, is clearly also fulfilling passages that I shouldn't say necessarily fulfilling. They're, they're helping to fulfill the passages that Jesus said would happen in this day here. Let's look at it. Luke 17, verse 26. And it was in the days as it, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered in the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, of course, we did a little teaching a little while back. I won't get into all of that in a news broadcast here. But one thing I will say here, if you have to go and see what they were eating and drinking in order to know what Jesus really meant by these famous words that he posted here. And when you go to the book of Enoch, we find out exactly what they were eating and drinking. According to Enoch, the fallen angels, when they came down and cohabitated with the women and produced children by them, they produced giants and said they ate up all the toil. I'm just paraphrasing this one because I didn't have it pulled up for you in time. But they ate all the toil of the men. In other words, all the vegetables and things that were being grown at that time, they ate everything. And when that could not sustain them any longer, according to Enoch, they turned on the human beings and began to eat the men and drink their blood. As well as it went on to say they sinned against the animals and they ate them as well. This is where eating human and animal flesh first began. Jesus says it would repeat again. That same thing would happen again. So what do we have here that's so interesting here to me in RT News's article right here? It's an inside look about ISIS. And what happened is they discovered some very interesting documentation that I wanted to share with you. Leaked documents from U.S. officials reveal Islamic State has a high level of organization with numerous departments, including one dealing with war spoils such as slaves, stolen antiquities, and natural resources. Documents seized by U.S. Special Operations Forces in a raid in Syria in May revealed the extremist group's hierarchy and complex bureaucracy. Some of the documents, including data stored on computer hard drives, CDs, DVDs, and paper, were later seen by Reuters. This really 
kind of brings it out. The level of bureaucratization, organization, uh, the Dewans, which is a high governmental body, the committees, uh, Brett uh, McGurk, President Barack Obama's special envoy for the anti-ISIL coalition, told Reuters, the documents show there are even two separate Dewans for the export of natural resources such as oil and for war, war spoils such as slaves. According to the Amos Huckstein, the U.S. State Department top official for energy affairs, these papers show how meticulous and data-oriented the militants are in dealing with natural resources. The Islamic State, ISIS or ISIL, is invested in the statehood of the and caliphate image and more so than any other jihadist enterprise. So formal organization besides being practical when you control so much contentious territory in major cities also reinforces the statehood image, said Ayamin al-Tamimi, an expert on ISIS structure from the Middle East Forum think tank. Other documents concentrate on their in, uh, internal rivalry between ISIS militants who obtain high positions and the rape of prisoners and treatment of slaves. I just want to give you a little idea there of what the article states here. But as you move on down, though, this is what really caught my attention was when they begin to talk about the fatwa. These are like the rules and regulations, the laws that are written in the group to begin with. Number 64 was issued on January 29th of 2015. It's kind of like delegations of what they are able to do. It says, which presents regulations for rape, explaining in detail when and how ISIS militants should have sexual intercourse with female slaves. The next one is the one that I see adding to the fulfillment of Jesus' own words. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. The group even has a fatwa justifying cannibalism in extreme circumstances. Cannibalism. <laughs> I mean, that just got me right there. But Jesus said it was as it was in the days of Noah, so would it be in this day that we're living in now. They were eating and drinking and giving in marriage. Enoch, the prophet, in his own writings there, even the Dead Sea Scroll contained the book of Enoch, which has been, for the most part, has survived down through time, especially uh, thanks to the Ethiopian community, the Ethiopian Jewish community that also has maintained this book. But the Ethiopian community there in the, in the book there of Enoch states that they were eating human beings. They were drinking their blood. And now we see ISIS actually has a fatwa, a declaration, a judgment, you might say, in their own guides, their own guidelines, justifying cannibalism. What else? Well... When I seen that, though, I could not help but remember what happens in the United States, not just the U.S., but even in Europe. Cannibalism isn't just limited to someone eating someone's flesh, according to ISIS members, that they're allowed to do in extreme circumstances, but it's part of the norm. Although very minute in the United States, WND exclusive, WD, WND mag, uh, news, uh, online news source, by the way, is a very well reputable news source like C well, CNN is not reputable, but you know what I mean, like, like Fox News or, or, or some well-known New York Times, something like that. Very well-known news source, WND exclusive. This was published on July the 16th of 2015. Aaron Klein was the, uh, was the one that wrote the article, Abortion, Body Parts, Not Just for Medical Research, is the title's uh, name of the article. Debate over stem cell use in food flavors, face creams reignited uh, followed uh, following the video about abortionist deal making. As a debate, I want to highlight some of the things in here for you. As the debate about abortion and stem cell research reignites in the U.S., it may be instructive to note that not all stem cell research is utilized for medical purposes. Stem cells derived from aborted fetuses are used in the U.S. for food and cosmetic research with one San Francisco-based beauty company notoriously incorporating cell lines in many of its products, including anti-aging face and eye creams. It's topical. 
Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and given in marriage. Humans, let's see what it says here. Planned Parenthood denied, oh, this was a little bit different there. I actually shrunk that down. I, I actually just blew up some of the main things I wanted to bring out. Artificial flavors. While much of the debate centers around medical research, stem cells are also utilized for lesser known lifestyle uses. For example, Cin Cinemox, a company that researches and sells flavor-boosting products to major worldwide food conglomerates, utilizes human embryonic kidney cells, or HEK-293, in many of its research patents. Uh, and by the way, they have uh, removed HEK-293 from their website where you cannot find it on there any longer especially after an article like this came out. The company does not use the stem cells in actual products, but it seems to engineer HEK-293 cells for laboratory testing using the cell lines to, stimul to simulate the taste receptor cells in the human mouth. HEK-293 cells are also used widely in pharmaceutical research and have been instrumental in creation of numerous vaccines and drugs. Cinemax boasts on its website its products are used by many of the world's leading food and beverage companies. Like most flavor, 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 flavor ingredients, Cinemax flavors, boosters, and flavors are used in minuscule quantities in foods and beverages. Our products are blended with uh, other ingredients to create appealing new flavors. Now, according to them, the actually the these the. the uh, the donor that was used in this was the, uh, I believe it was the kidney, I believe it was, or liver, or was it liver? It was used from, a, from an unborn fetus, and they were able to, they're so proud to tell you, they were able to use only one and that was uh, harvested back, I believe, in the 70s, is what they say there. Cinemax sells its Complex brand flavor ingredients titled Sweet Mix, Savory Mix, and Bitter Mix to flavor companies for use in a wide variety of foods and beverages. To April 2015, press releases relate Simonex maintains research partnership with Nestle's, PepsiCo, and Swiss-based Fermanike, the world's largest privately owned company in the fragrance and flavor business. You know, the thing is, I don't care how minute it is, I wouldn't want anything to do with it. It's still cannibalism. I could go a long way with that one, but uh, you know, some people just don't get it. Following some negative publicity on the reported use of HEK-293 in Cinemax research products in 2011, the term HEK-293 cannot be found on the company's website or in any promotional material. However, a WND search of the U.S. Patents Collection database finds Cinemax filed 156 patents that the majority of those utilize HEK-293 cells in its research, some quite extensively. Fetal cells, now just remember, that's fetal cells that are used in order to generate the stem cells from this. In one, uh, uh, over 100 examples, the company's patent title compounds that inhibit block bitter taste and compositions and use thereof details that the research process of using HEK-293 cells to, to simulate human taste receptors to test products. The cells were also utilized in research ta uh, tasting for numerous sweet flavor modifier patents and other patents testing bitter flavors. This does not mean Cinemax requires a constant stream of aborted fetus, fetus kidney cells to test its products. In fact, HEK-293 cell lines used in modern research are, are, were derived from a human embryonic kidney cells from one fetus aborted legally under Dutch law and cultured in 1973 in Leiden, the Netherlands. Mm. Unbelievable. You know, the whole thing is that it just happens. It happens regardless. Um, and, you know, the whole the, the thing is we're living in a day where cannibalism has become the norm, friends. It has become the norm. And it's sad to say, but we are living in that day that Jesus spoke about as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and given in marriage. What's to happen next? Who knows? I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.